Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. In this video, I'm hopefully buying a Japanese automotive icon, a Japanese dream car for me ever since I was a wee little lad growing up in the 90s. So I've never really owned a Japanese car before. I mean, I bought a 93 Camry for a weird engine experiment. I bought a Lexus that I gave away and I bought a Subaru that I gave away, but I've never really owned one for myself and driven it or modified it. And this particular Japanese car, I've always wanted. They look really cool. You can make them really fast, but unfortunately they're kind of rare right now, at least in good condition. And people usually want a ton of money for them and they're hacked up and destroyed. So anyway, we're going to go look at one right now. The guy claims that it's in decent condition, so it's probably not at all. Well, let's go and find out. Let's go. All right. So we're going to look at a fast all wheel drive Japanese car and a really fast all wheel drive American car. Jesus! And you know I can't go look at a Japanese car without my partially Japanese friend, Peter. Uh, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, that's right. Hayaku. What does that mean? Fast. Oh, that means fast? fast. What is it? Say it again. Hayaku. Hayaku. Hayaku? Hayaku. Ooh, maybe I'll get those as license plates. That's got to be taken well, at this point, right? For this new car, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, but they probably, someone's got Hayaku, I'm sure. There's some JDM stuff around Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting Hayaku if no one else has it. All right, guys, it's the next day. We're in a slightly different car than before. And Peter and I have now looked at two of these cars and we couldn't get any footage. Sometimes it's not up to me. It's up to the people showing me the car that I want to be on camera. You got to respect that. But anyway, both of these cars were... They were just big disappointments. They're hacked up, rusted out, crashed. Just nothing yeah, matched. Just like all of them, overpriced, ridiculous. So anyway, back to the drawing board. Boost! And boost! <laughs> Guys, I bought my first Japanese sports car last night. So Peter and I went and looked at one of these two days ago, and like all of them, it was completely rusted out and rotted out, unfortunately. I've been looking for one of these for months, and I finally bought one yesterday that pass the legit street cars test. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't need anything. It needs a lot of things. And I paid a ridiculous amount of money for this car. I wasn't able to get any footage of checking this out. It was last night um, and Peter wasn't able to come with me, but he is at the shop right now working on some other stuff, cleaning up. He doesn't know I bought this. Uh, so we're gonna pull into legit street quarters together. I'm gonna show Peter and you guys at the same time. But anyway, let's go surprise Peter and I'll show you guys what I bought. You guys hear that? I gotta pull over. I think one of the tires is losing air. Well, it's definitely not all the way flat, but this tire is definitely losing some air. It's making a horrendous howling noise too. Luckily, I brought my Fantic tire inflator and jump pack because I bought this car kind of far away from the house and I take these guys with me, well, really everywhere. They're in my daily drivers as well. And this isn't the first time this tire inflator has saved me. Look at that, nine PSI. Just gonna kick it up to 40. Even before the tire went down, I was getting a nasty driveline vibration. So later on in the video, we're gonna swap to a mix of Honda S2000 and Honda Prelude wheels and tires for diagnosis purposes only. But while the tire inflator is doing its thing, I gotta let you guys know about Fantic's biggest sale ever on the X8 Apex tire inflator and the T8 Apex jump starter. And the last time I did a promotion for either one of these, they sold out in like a day and a half and now they're having this crazy blowout deal. So if you've ever wanted one of these, definitely click on my Amazon link down below. All you're gonna do is check off the little coupon box right below the price. That's gonna get you $40 off the tire inflator and give you a massive discount on the jump pack. This is definitely the biggest sale they've ever had. So take advantage. I've been using both of these for almost two years. And with the T8 jumper, you can start completely dead batteries on big V8 cars like my Caprice with no issues. And it can jump up to 50 cars on one charge. The X8 tire inflator can fill completely flat car tires, big truck tires, bike tires, and even balls, and can literally fit anywhere in your car. These can make the difference between being stranded and needing a tow or simply driving on. These also also work great when you're filling tires at the racetrack or if you're a thousand miles away from home and your brother-in-law's traverse gets 
a flat tire. Both have really bright LED lights and can charge other devices like laptops and cell phones, and the jumper even has 65 watt fast charging, and you can charge multiple devices at the same time. And Fantic is celebrating their two year anniversary and giving away a bunch of cool stuff on their site. So I'm gonna drop that link down below. You guys can win a brand new iPhone, a drone, and much more, and it's totally free to enter. So check out the links down below. Use those coupon codes. Take advantage of this awesome deal. And with that, our tire inflator is done. So let's head back to the shop and surprise Peter. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> I'm one of you now, yeah. Peter. I'm one of you. Oh, hello, Priest. This is great. Oh, man. Hold on. It's got a, uh, it's got a turbo timer. Oh, true. 90s JDM fashion. That's right. It's got a turbo timer. Look at that. We turned off the ignition. We got to take care of our turbo. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's awesome. I did it. This is so good. It's so clean. Yeah. Wow. There's a uh, there's a lot to discover. It's yeah. it is clean. Yes, I, I will give it that. It's like original paint. I mean, it's faded, but it's like the original. It doesn't look like it's been resprayed or anything. No, original That's paint. Super cool. Yes, got the sunroof. Yeah, I got the sunroof. Yeah. Guess guess where it's from? Uh, this has got to. It can't be a Midwest car. No. For sure. Nevada. It's a straight up desert car. Oh, okay. A desert okay. car. The entire Carfax. Nice. It was just brought here to Chicago nice. like three days ago. Sweet. All right, so obviously I bought an Eclipse. This is a GSX with a five-speed manual. So in the world of Eclipses, this is the best of the best. I mean, not condition-wise, but you know, the spec. Check it out. Oh. oh yeah, the mighty 4G63 Turbo. So the 95 and 96 was before the facelift that everybody kind of recognizes. So it's before the big wing in the back and the big bumper that everybody would have a gigantic intercooler behind um, before the, you know, the Fast and the Furious style Eclipse that everybody knows and loves. So we will be facelifting this car. It is an excellent foundation for what's gonna be a complete, a complete build, a complete restoration. We're going you know, top to bottom on this car. Like I said, I bought this thing last night and what stuck out at me right away were these right here. So these strut towers, they always rust out and these are 100% intact. Now, it used to have a battery here. It's been relocated to the back, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. This guy was into stereos and stuff like that. Um, and then another thing that stuck out was that it's mostly stock. I mean, it has a stock gearbox and everything, although it does have an aftermarket exhaust manifold, so maybe it was modified at some point, but as I'm gonna show you guys, it doesn't look like your typical modded out Eclipse GSX where there's like boost gauges and tacks and everything drilled into the interior. Um, the interior is pretty sound and all of this stuff, like all the other ones I saw, vacuum lines were all over the place, wiring harnesses were destroyed, you know, just little details like this where it still has the original brackets for all of this just really shows me that I don't think this thing was ragged out and modified, you know, very much. So I did kind of try and crawl under the car and check it out underneath and it looks really clean. We're gonna be getting it on the lift here in a minute. But aside from the clear coat being faded from the desert, this car is straight as an arrow. It is absolutely beautiful if you can just look past kind of its blemishes and its mundane front bumper. This just looks like a base model. The facelift was a really big deal on these, but no rust at all on this car. And aside from looking at the shock towers, here is the battery. Something else I looked into, this is one of the fans. The fan wasn't installed because that aftermarket turbo manifold kind of protrudes where the fan should be, so we gotta fix that. Something else that I've been looking at is this whole trunk area in here, and it is just solid as a rock. And like I said, I crawled in there, and I got in places like this, and all the brackets are original. It doesn't look like this car's ever been in an accident. It's never been rotted out. And it is so rare, so rare to find one of these in this condition. This might be the last unmolested, relatively stock, rust-free GSX ever. Like, this might be the last one. It, it could very well be the last one. I think I should officially give it the title. And it's got good trunk struts and good hood struts, which if you guys watch all of my new car reveals, I always get cars with bad struts, and these are good. 
Yeah. Oh, this has got, oh, look at this. This is like the 90s CRX Supra, like driver face dash. I really like the S2000 too. Everything, you can touch every, I got short I, I love the interior, I man. It here. feels great in here. Oh man, this is so cool. So the interior is okay, but it's all there and nothing's been cut up. Like the dash is in excellent condition. No holes drilled in or anything? Yeah, no holes, nothing. Oh, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, not, not any cracks or... That's awesome. So obviously the interior isn't brand new or anything like that, but it's very, very complete. It needs just a couple little trim pieces. The back seat is in excellent condition. It came with some BMW center caps for some reason. It has a sunroof, which I think looks awesome on these white cars because it's tinted. And you're not gonna believe the miles on this guy. 238,000 miles. No smoke from the tailpipe nothing it runs perfect and the guy i bought it from bought it in nevada and he took it on a 2000 mile road trip like three days before i bought it no issues whatsoever he gave me a bunch of cool pictures of the trip and uh, it sounds pretty good too so i like the fact that they don't sound like weed whackers like like hondas listen to how nice this engine idles too there's no ticking no nothing it's in great shape mechanically, I think. We should probably lift it up and, and find out everything it needs because it's gonna need stuff. There's definitely some kind of like ball joint creaking noise coming from the front. Peter, check it out. Look at this 1996 foam. Oh, no way. Yeah. Wow. Like there's a good chance the rear bumper has like never been off. I think that's the Vintag. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. When I crawled underneath there yesterday, I went right for the rear crash bar. And these little frame rails right here, everything just looks totally original. And man, if you guys have seen some of the rust buckets I've bought on this channel, you can only imagine how nice this is for me. I mean, look at this exhaust bracket. I, I never ever get desert cars. I think everyone after this needs to be a desert car. I, I, seriously, I mean, this is, this is the only way to do it. This is the only way to do it. Just, you know, a little tiny bit of surface rust on you know, control arms and whatnot, but. I mean, look at the hose clamp. You Midwest guys know what I'm talking about. How is that even in existence anymore? It's beautiful. Oh, wow, look at this. Found something wrong with the car right off the bat. Oh, this one's loose too. That could cause a driveline vibration for sure. Let's go ahead and tighten these guys up. One up here too, is that loose? No, they tightened one of the three. But these little corners right here, awesome condition. Yeah, look at all of this. And it's had some nice steady oil leaks over the years to kind of undercoat the bottom, which is okay with me. But all these lines are in excellent condition. Um, yeah, this is a little sloppy, although that could be normal. I don't know, we'll check it out. We're gonna swap the wheels and tires and take it for a ride to see if the road noise goes away. But it has a complete exhaust made in Japan Apex. It's Apex. Oh, okay, never mind. It's it's Apex. So the guy I bought it from, he literally only had the car for a few days. He said this is not the factory turbo, but he said it is a factory turbo. I think from the first generation, he said it's slightly bigger. I'm not I'm not really sure. Um, but a complete exhaust. I can already tell we got an oil leak right here, so we're gonna fix that up. We got something going on here. This should be replaced as well. They might not have used the right kind of hose for that. The transmission looks kind of nice and shiny and potentially new. I'm not sure. The guy said he bought it from the previous owner of like 12 or 13 years, and he said it does have an aftermarket clutch with a light and flywheel and the exhaust, and that's pretty much all it had done to it. So not sure if that's just new or they cleaned it when they had it out. Uh, we have our slave cylinder right here. It has poly mounts for the engine and transmission as well. We have a different charge pipe, but the factory little baby intercooler. Another sign this thing probably wasn't too extensively modified. It's got a little grease coming out of the axle boot. No big deal, we'll do a boot kit there. And we'll have to figure out where this ground goes. I think it bolts to the uh, drive shaft. What? What, what, what? No, no, Peter, no. That is not what it does. <laughs> All signs point to a very healthy engine, but we want to make sure. And we're going to start off with an oil change. Woo! All right, the oil looked really good. Let's get this filter off. It's pretty loose, actually. And we'll see what we got inside of here. Yep. 
Smells like regular used motor oil, no fuel or anything. I'm also gonna cut that oil filter apart just to make sure there's no glitter in this engine. I just wanna make sure this engine is totally sound because I will be modifying this car tastefully. We're not gonna go crazy and destroy everything. Um, and I have a lot of plans for this. This might be one of my most expensive, most ambitious builds I've ever done on the channel. Um, and I'll tell you guys also how much I paid for it. It's, it's quite disgusting. But I'm gonna talk to you guys about it while we wrench, while we work on the car, because this is a car channel where we actually work on cars. All right, so if you guys have been around the channel for a while, you know that I started off as an American car guy through and through. I wasn't into anything but American cars. Then later on, I started working for Mercedes-Benz. This is looking pretty good. And I developed an appreciation for European cars. But secretly, as a young lad, I always liked these DSM cars. I couldn't admit it to any of my friends back in high school or anything like that, but I always thought these were really, really cool. And that one day I would own one. And that day has finally come at age 37 after most all of them have been destroyed. We're gonna replace this smushy hose right here. It looks like it's gonna fail any minute and this feeds coolant to our oil cooler. So we'll just open up the radiator drain and everything is just so easy to work on. This is so nice. The coolant looks practically new. Loosen these clamps up here. We're probably gonna lose a little bit more coolant. I drained the radiator. Oh, there's gonna be a little left in this line. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot left. A lot left. Oh, it's as if I didn't drain anything. Okay. Guess I'm gonna be forcefully cleaning the floor. I got a full gallon out of this tiny little radiator. Man, this engine holds a lot. I threw the old oil filter on there so it wouldn't drip all over me and then we just make a big mess with coolant. That's what was supposed to happen when I pulled that hose back. Why didn't you tell me, Peter, why? <laughs> I drained the radiator and then there's like 50 more gallons right here. Uh, historically, the Japanese are known for their sneak attacks. <laughs> I feel like that's what you got. <laughs> You're gonna have to tell me about some of this stuff as we move along with this project. Wow. This hose is really bad. This is like about to burst. It's hard to tell, but when these things get really mushy and gummy, they're gonna go. So when it gets mushy, it usually means it's expanding and about to burst. So you can see this is what it's supposed to look like. And yeah, this guy was on there. I'm just gonna drop this down. So we have more room to slide that hose on. So these are the first two bolts I'm removing from my DSM. Cool. All right, let's slide this hose on there. And then, like so. All right, I'm done trying to stay clean. Let's get this oil filter back out of the way. Make it a mess anyway. Must be smarter than DSM. There we go. So my plan for this car is to do a very clean, professional, kind of more adult build and I do want it to have some decent power though. These are all wheel drive. They can make a ton of power. They can be a lot of fun to drive. So my goal right off the bat, kind of like stage one, if you will, is 450 all wheel horsepower. Um, but along with that, we're gonna be cleaning the entire underbody, dry ice blasting. I'm gonna send this entire car out in pieces to get fully painted and I need color ideas. All right, so close your eyes and imagine this, a very high quality pearl white paint job. And then we're gonna do the full facelift body kit. So the updated factory front bumper, we're gonna see a big intercooler behind it. The factory facelifted side skirts and rear bumper, and then that wing that everybody knows and loves on the Eclipse, the factory wing. Then we're gonna lower the car, nothing too crazy, not too slammed. And I'm gonna install some BBS CCW type of wheels, but deep dish, I'm thinking silver with a chrome lip. And then behind them will be some big red brake calipers. So we're gonna do big brakes all the way around. The stance is just gonna be flush. We're gonna roll the fenders, we're gonna roll the quarters, but it's not gonna be all cambered out or anything. It's just gonna be straight as an arrow, very streamlined, very professional. And then obviously it's going to get the legit streetcars treatment where everything is going to be mechanically sorted. Um, we're gonna do the interior, we're gonna restore the interior. So it's all gonna be nice and factory fresh with a good sound and radio, working air conditioning. It's gonna be a legit streetcar, a DSM legit streetcar. And I know these things aren't known for their reliability, but I'm gonna try my hardest to actually make this something you can hop in and just drive it wherever you go. So anyway, that is the game plan as of now. And it all starts with 
these little repairs that we're doing. Anyway, drop a comment down below if you have any ideas for the build. And after we make a couple of these repairs, we're gonna pull the valve cover off because the big Achilles heel with the 4G63 engine is crank walk. So they actually didn't have this on the earlier DSMs and then later on they went to a seven bolt engine, which this should have, but we're gonna pull the valve cover and there's a way you can tell by looking at the head bolts. So we're gonna verify because some people do swap these to six bolts. And if we have a six bolt swapped Eclipse, that would be awesome. All right, there we go. And believe it or not, we could not find a gasket for this anywhere. We called like every parts store and they're like, yeah, it's not available. Trying to be gentle removing this gasket. It's not working out because we're gonna have to make our own gasket. That's okay, we'll just trace it off the bottom of this tube. But yeah, this thing is just all brittle and deteriorating away. Here's how you make your own gasket. You drill a hole right where the bolts go. And next up, we are going to install this gasket to the oil pan. And then we're gonna tighten it up and everything. Sweet, done, right? And now you have a restrictor plate installed. I'm just kidding, we're not done. From there, we're gonna take a box cutter and just trace around. Top side's a little bit more difficult, but don't worry, you can do it. Get out of here, little pizza gasket. Now we'll go ahead and take the gasket off. There she is, a pretty gasket. All right, then we have one ancient artifact of the old gasket left, and Indiana Jones style, we're gonna use that to locate our center hole. So right about there. Now we're gonna measure the size of the oil drain with our stepper bit. So we're right at 9 sixteenths. And now we're using the very satisfying stepper bit to drill our hole. Don't go too far or you'll be out about three cents for a new gasket. Now I'm just gonna clean up these holes a little bit and there are specific hole punches that you can buy that make making gaskets really easy, but I forgot them at home. So we have to improvise. We're gonna go ahead and bolt the drain back in. Give these guys a snug. All right, all right, new oil filter going on. And in a lot of cases, you can just tighten an oil filter by hand. You don't have to go too crazy. All right, so we got our new gasket here, our new hose right here, our new oil filter. And in a little bit, we're gonna take this over to the wash rack and just pressure wash everything. And then after our test drive, we'll kind of check it over and see if we have any more leaks. This is the oil pressure switch. It's possible this is leaking, but it's kind of just all caked up. So we don't know exactly where everything's coming from now. All right, next up, we're gonna pop some spark plugs out and boroscope the motor. And then we're also gonna pull this valve cover off and see if we can discover the mystery of, is this a six bolt or seven bolt motor? I always like to break spark plugs loose by hand first, then we can use the gun. And what do we got, what do we got? Looks like we have some NGKR BPR 70 ESs. Are these one step colder than factory? They might be. So far, they're in really nice condition, though. Oh yeah, keep them coming. Beautiful, a little bit of oil on this one, could be the little seals for the valve cover, but no big deal, we're gonna be doing a valve cover gasket anyway. Really nice plugs, and this is a bit different for me because I'm used to changing like 16 of these on a mid-2000s V8 from Mercedes, but anyway, I'll take this. So you'd think the maintenance on one of these would be much less than a mid-2000s Mercedes, but these had quite a few issues, so it's probably on par. No, 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 this has gotta be cheaper. Um, but speaking of this thing not being cheaper, what did you guys guess for what I paid for this car? 238,000 mile clean title, 96 GSX. Four years ago, I would say $2,000, 2,500 because it's rust free. I paid eight thousand dollars roughly eight times the kelly blue book value of this car now obviously kelly blue book isn't the best resource for weird cars like this but eight thousand dollars for this car it has basically no clear coat left the interior needs work obviously it's got a couple little mechanical things wrong with it but eight thousand dollars eight thousand dollars do you know how long it took me to just 
muster up the courage to, to fork over that kind of money. But this is what some of the other GSXs looked like that I was looking for. Basically for five or $6,000, you get a completely rotted out, rusted out basket case of a car. And you know, yeah, maybe it has a little bit less mileage, but really at this point, I, I don't really care about the mileage. There's no way the engine and transmission are original on something like this anyway. Um, and to find one with these bones, a basically stock one with no rust, it is so difficult and you're gonna pay a lot of money for these cars. Now I'm not saying that there aren't some of these that are gonna slip through the cracks. There are probably still a bunch of old ladies that have these types of cars, mostly automatics though, um, that don't know what they have. But yeah, the guy I bought it from, he lives in Chicago where I'm from. So he's been around the block and he, and he just told me, I believe him. He's like, I paid $6,000 for this. It was in Nevada. I flew out there. I got a hotel. I had to stay two nights and I drove it back. He's like, so I have about $1,000 into travel. So he's like, I'm gonna make $1,000. I gave him eight, you know, he had seven into it. But yeah, so $6,000 out in Nevada, that was a steal for this car. Um, and he did it, but it just, it, it took money to get to Chicago. So anyway, 8,000 bucks. I, I know it's completely insane if you haven't looked at the market on these, but check it out. That's roughly what they go for in this condition. All right, I'll take this valve cover off. This hose right here is a, yeah, okay. And I figured that would happen. Goodbye. This one looks nice and fresh. Be careful when you're taking these center bolts out, especially if you've already pulled the spark plugs, you don't want the entire bolt to fall in there, but even the washer can slide off. So just be mindful of that. We have like all 20 bolts out of this. This is crazy. This is the amount of bolts that hold this valve cover in. Are you sure you got them all? I am sure, I'm sure, Peter. When we were doing the lightning engine, I forgot a few. There we go. All right, what do we have? What do we have? We've got a lot of RTV that they used. That's what was holding it in. But clean, very clean. These cams are excellent. They're like polished lobes. This looks beautiful. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how you can figure out the difference between a six bolt and a seven bolt 4G63 engine because I am a 4G63 expert thanks to Google and about you know 20 minutes of time. So. The big difference here is that the seven bolts, the later engines had an issue with crank walk. And that's where a lot of these cars got their unreliable rating from basically everybody was the engine had big issues if you souped it up and, and it put out more than about 400 all wheel horsepower. Uh, so actually the early DSM cars, the 90 to 92 and a half had the better engine, the six bolt. Um, so anyway, if you got the valve cover off and you have a 12 millimeter, 12 point socket in it, fits on the head bolts, that means at the very least, you have a seven bolt head. And the six bolts had a 10 millimeter Allen head. So right off the bat, we know that this is definitely a seven bolt head. A much easier method to tell if you have a seven bolt head is just look at the last exhaust manifold studs. See how that guy right there is bigger than that? And that guy right there is bigger than the rest of them? Basically, the two end studs and nuts will be larger than all the other ones. Now, some guys do swap the seven bolt head onto the six bolt engine, so don't just go off of that. If you wanna know if you have a six bolt block, just look at this section of the oil pan right underneath the crank. If it's completely flat, then you have a six bolt, but if it has a dip down like this, you know, it kinda just goes down a little bit, then that is a seven bolt, and that is definitely what we have here. Now, luckily, Peter here came to model himself and his six bolt <laughs> 4G63 engine uh, that he's putting in his Chrysler Conquest. And you can see that this is a six bolt, but it has a seven bolt head. And we got the larger studs here at the very end for the exhaust manifold or header in this case. And then if we go down, he doesn't have an oil pan on it just yet, but you can see right here, it's completely flat. And on the seven bolt, the block would protrude down a little bit and that oil pan would conform around it. So. This is a built six bolt, and I think I want to build six bolt too now, Peter. Six bolt buddies? Yeah, let's do it. I'm thinking I'm probably going to drop this entire engine and subframe when we send it out for paint um, because I want to do the engine compartment as well. I want this to be like a primo, top notch, adult DSM build, like just professional everything, legit streetcar style. Um, so if I'm going to have the motor out anyway, 
and it's a good working engine. I don't wanna just like blow this thing up. I'm thinking of just getting the six bolt right from the get go. Um, I could even swap my seven bolt head. There's some debate on that, but a lot of people say the seven bolt head flows better than the six bolt. So we can kind of mix and match and Frankenstein this up a little bit. Um, and then a larger turbo injectors and all that kind of stuff. LSD differentials. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a very complete and a very clean build when I'm done. All right, we're going inside the 4G63. And, ooh, there we go. All right, 63DTF1. And it's pointing towards the front of the crank. That's good. Piston looks pretty nice. Not too bad. And here's a little bit of the cylinder wall. We can see cross hatching still in it. This is in beautiful condition. And yeah, I mean, the car has 238,000 miles on it. I have no idea if the engine's been done or not. Being a relatively stock car, it's possible this thing was just simply maintained. And if you didn't beat these up too bad, the engine could last. Here's another one of the pistons. And here's our last one. Looking pretty. Kind of hard to tell, but even the valve's not gummed up. All right, so we've disabled the fuel system and I just want to check the compression on this engine. I think we have a bad starter. Every once in a while, it just kind of clicks like that. Oh, there we go. All right, so we're at 175 on that one. All right, next cylinder. Bad starter. Pretty much the same on that. All right, whenever you're ready, Peter. Come on. Okay, okay, hang on. All right, we got the Fantic on here. Battery's at 10 volts. And look at how we're jumping this. So the battery used to be here, and the guy before us relocated it and put some big speaker wire in here. And this is just, just out in the open, just hanging out. Definitely have to fix that. All right, whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah. All right, perfect. So I've intermittently had that starter clicking issue before when the battery was at full power, um, but it definitely is more apparent when the battery is getting weak. So I'll have to check over grounds and, and just make sure everything is good. But anyway, last one. Oh, there it is. All right, perfect. This engine is an absolute beast. We're right between 170 and 180 on all of them. I'm really happy with that. All right, so at this point I am going to replace this old crusty valve cover gasket. Look at these guys. Oh, I'm surprised they're not leaking oil, more oil through. These are pretty bad. Oh, I wonder how old this engine actually is. I mean, these don't look brand new. Crusty. Oh yeah, very satisfying. This is what they should feel like. So I'll pop these new guys in there. And they had these at the store. They didn't have that oil drain tube gasket anywhere. Everyone we called, they're like, no, we can't even order it. I'm sure it's somewhere online, but whatever. And we'll install our new valve cover gasket as well. Okay, that's that. Oh, forgot, I said I'd cut this in half. I don't think there's much of a point. I think everything's in great shape, but let's cut it in half. I don't have any blades for the Sawzall, so we're going old school. That's all I got. There we go. I'm like Paul Bunyan over here. Back in the old days, this is how we used to cut our wood, our oil filters. This was the most pathetic attempt at cutting open an oil filter in the world. That's why you need the right tools, people. Okay. So what we want to look at are the pleats, not where we cut it, but closer to here. And there's no glitter or anything, so we're good. We're good. I kind of knew we were good. I just made a really big mess, probably for no reason, but... Um, 
We're having fun in the shop today. Yeah, got an open can and oil filters. These things are like double the cost. I wonder if it makes any difference at all or if the wicks is just as good. They're probably exactly the same. All right, before the valve cover goes on, it's always satisfying to just pour oil directly on cams and lifters. I don't know why. I do this every time I have a valve cover off and I'm doing an oil change at the same time. It's just, it's fun. You should try it. And of course, I'm using Amsoil Synthetic. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to get 25% off of all the Amsoil products. I use Amsoil in all of my cars. I have been for years and it is simply the best. Here you go, Camlobe. You're going to be protected. I'll take care of you forever and ever. Well, until I swap you out for a six volt engine. Peter. Cheers, brother. The seven volts. That's right. Now you guys want to see something really cool? If we both do this at the same time, we can fiddle the top of the cylinder head with oil. Again, I don't know why this is satisfying, but look at look at it all draining away. Yay! Don't get it in the spark plug holes. All right, we're going back together with the valve cover, and in some of these corner spots, we just want a little bit of the RTV. So on, on this half moon, I just placed a little, and then it'll kind of smush out to fill in the corners where we need it to be. And then we're just going to do the corners around the half moons as well. And I like to just put a light coating just right on top here. Something good. All right, going back on. So we're fixing a couple of oil leaks here today for very little money. Although I got to say the valve cover kit was like 46 bucks, which is kind of a ripoff. All right, we'll tighten this guy up. All right, you guys get the idea. I'm gonna tighten up the valve cover. We'll get the plugs and wires back together. We gotta to fill our antifreeze and then we're throwing on some Honda wheels before our test drive and I'll probably blast the engine off with the pressure washer as well. And then that way we can see if we have any more oil leaks and see if our road noise is fixed and we'll have this thing at least pretty well diagnosed in this video. All right, we replaced this hose here. Everything's ready to go. Go ahead, fire it up. Of course. Uh, man, it's only at nine volts after a few hours. This is a really expensive Optima battery in this car. Um, so I don't know, maybe it has a draw or something. I did not need that on my road trip back from buying the car, but I'm glad I had it. All right, go ahead. One thing I just noticed is this right here. We have a totally open nipple here on the intake, unless it's blocked off internally. Give it a little throttle. Yeah, this has got to be blocked off. It's not doing anything. All right, that's kind of weird. Like I say, you cannot hear the turbo at all. There's like nothing. I just popped the air filter up a little bit. Look at this, a stock air box. Stock air filter on a GSX, so weird. Hold on, let's see if we can hear it by now. Peter, go ahead, give it some throttle. Wow, it's so quiet. I know it's getting into boost. You can feel it kick in. It's not fast. It feels just like a stock one. You'd think you'd hear a little bit of this turbo though. All right, I gotta take a look at the compressor wheel here and see what we can see. Just wanna make sure this thing is spinning freely. I felt it going into boost, but let's see. Oh yeah, it spins really good. There's no shaft play whatsoever. It spins great. So that's okay. So we're missing the cotter pin that holds the wastegate arm on. So whatever, I just kind of pulled it off here, but you can't move this wastegate at all. All right, guys, I have a hose attached to the wastegate actuator. It gets its boost reference from the intake tube there. So we're just gonna give this a little bit of air pressure, not a lot, you don't wanna blow out the diaphragm. And we should see this wastegate actuator arm move. There we go. Okay. All right, I guess it doesn't make turbo sound at idle with a stock air box and I think a stock turbo. Um, I just thought we'd hear something. It's so weird. But anyway, uh, with that, we have to get Honda wheels on here. Peter's going to go for his first ride in the car. We're going to see if we fix this horrible driveline vibration noise um, and feel some boost. All right, we're removing these really old Koenigs. Look at this, these tires are from 2003. They're 19 year old tires. Look at this DSM goodness. Look at this, solid as a rock. So I don't know if they tried to put some kind of 
undercoating on here, or maybe that's factory. I'm not sure, but we're gonna we're gonna be blasting it off. But I mean, look at look at the brake lines. Look at that. Just used to everything just being gooped up with rust. All right, so all we have for testing purposes are Honda wheels that Peter brought over. And most of them are from a Honda Prelude, and I think we have one of them from an S2000. So this is gonna be a very unique DSM right here. But I just need these on here for diagnosis purposes to figure out what's going on with this howling noise when you're driving. It sounds like it could be a bad differential, it could be a bad center support bearing, or it could simply be 19 year old tires. Well, there you have it, S2000 wheel on a DSM. You've seen it here first. I gotta say, these Prelude twists look pretty good. Like, it looks like they could have just been on there from the factory. Man, how mundane is this car without the facelift though? It looks just very, very normal. All right, we cleaned up a little bit under the hood here too with the pressure washer. Needs a new dipstick, I know. And here's where we're at down here. So if you remember, this was quite crusty before with oil everywhere. And now we have fixed the oil leak. We have fixed a potential coolant disaster and uh, everything's looking good. Let's go for a cruise. All right, I wanna see if I can hear this noise. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Just like a winding noise, I think, coming from the back. The dips have fluid and everything, so. Yeah, there it is. Ooh. Yeah, we'll have to figure that one out. It's definitely not the tires. Hey, that could be a wheel bearing. It could be a differential. It's kind of hard to tell, but we're going to be taking everything apart anyway, and I want to upgrade to LSD diffs, so we'll be replacing a lot of parts while we're in there. That'll probably just fix it. Just past the Corvette. <laughs> no boost. And some boost. And this thing's pretty slow, not gonna lie. I need a little practice on that all-wheel drive launch. <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, this, this is pretty gutless right now. I know they can be really fast. I used to lose to these things all the time when I totally legally raced at the track late at night in my Trans Am when I was 18 years old. Um, but yeah, they, they would always beat me right off the line. I'd get them. I'd get them later on, but these things were quick. Yeah, we need to change this, guys. It's just a very, very slow car currently, but it drives straight as an arrow. The steering is super tight. It just overall looks to have been very, very well maintained. Uh, we do have a check engine light. I'm, I don't know what that is. I'm not even worried about it. And the SRS light, believe it or not, was the previous owner of like 12 years was big into stereos and he had a PlayStation and a TV where the airbag was. And I don't think there's actually an airbag behind there. So we'll fix that up as well. But I'd much rather have a previous owner that was into stereos than some of the early guys who modded these cars out because they were just, just hacked up. Did I mention this thing has ice cold AC? How often do you see that on one of these anymore? All right guys, that will do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I'll be looking for parts for this car. There goes the turbo timer. Um, like an aftermarket turbo kit, bigger turbo, intercooler, stuff like that. Um, all the facelift parts. So you can email me at legitstreetcars at gmail.com. I'm probably gonna need a little bit of help with this one because I've never modified a Japanese car. So I don't really, I don't, I don't know too many people in this world except for Peter and my friend Arnie and I guess a couple other ones. But anyway, let me know what you guys want to see done to the car. But I think my overall plan of just an adult DSM build is going to be a pretty epic one. And I'm really excited to bring you guys this content. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, or if you just discovered this channel, because normally I do American and Euro cars. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video. Oh,